All right, there we go. Look at it. And Stacy's in the room. She's joining us this week. Okay, let me. Let me access it. Hi. much cleavage. Welcome, welcome, one and all. We good? Welcome. Yeah, you're, you're straightish. I'm straightish for all that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's better, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, hi, guys. Hi. Hello, 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 Toronto. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The two of us are in Toronto, Stacey, and the, the foreigner is over there. Yes, the star. <laughs> the, the star boy, you know. The star boy is over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, we want to say welcome back to those who joined us last week. We mm -hmm. did the pre-launch for episode one and the launch of House Out of Order. Mm. And this week we're going live again because we got the idea from Yvette last week that this might need to be a yes. weekly get together. Yeah. And because Stacy wasn't on last week, we get a good opportunity now to hear Stacy's take, Damien, because <laughs> now everybody should have seen episode one. So we want to do a mm -hmm. recap of episode one of House Out of Order. We want to talk about the experience as actors and so on in the business. And then, of course, tell people how they can watch a little bit later from now. So that's yeah. kind of where we're going tonight, guys. If you're just joining us, come on in. Welcome to, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Damien's Live as we talk about House Out of Order. Damien yeah. is playing um, James in House Out of Order. And if you haven't watched it yet, where have you been? We welcome <laughs> you. Um, make sure you get a chance to watch it tonight and catch up because the, the first episode is on YouTube. So you, yes. can, you can get a chance to re-watch and catch up so that you know what's going on tonight in the second episode. Um, so Stacy um, and Damien, I know them from Toronto. Stacy, I met actually me, Damon, and Stacy linked up back <laughs> on, yeah. on the set of I Need to Know My Father. Yes. Um, I played somebody that was mean to Stacy's character. <laughs> <laughs> and I played Damien's mother. And, and I'm not that old, folks. And <laughs> <laughs> just to clear the air. And um, oh. we had a really good time. I think we, you know, that was like, I knew Damien long before that from, you know, York days and so on. But yeah. we had a good time connecting on that set, working with Marcia mm -hmm. Brown Productions, which is the premier production house in Toronto. Yeah. Yes. And, you know? Yes. So for those wondering, like, how do these three people come together on this screen? That's where it started. It started on the stage for us to reunite. But of course, we knew each other through different different means. Like, you know, I was running a radio station, 105.5 FM, now Vibe 105. Changed it to from CHRY to Vibe. So they've known my journey and I've known mm -hmm. theirs. I've watched these two young people take on, you know, the land of theater, the land of screen, and then go on to do other interesting things, which we'll talk about because Stacey's doing all kind of things. Um, <laughs> but that's how this little happy bunch of three are gathered here today. And of course, we're excited because of Damien's shot at this role in House Out of Order. Yes. This is his yes. first lead in a TV series. Um, and so we're excited about that. And we're here, of course, to support and to give you guys some backstory and so on. So now that you know who we are, so we have Stacey and Buchanan and we have Damien G. Brown. Make sure you follow him. And of course, myself, I'm Danae Peart and I go by Media Biz Teal. So now you know who we are. Let's get into it. Last week was episode one. Damien, 
sit Ooh. back and make we hear this. <laughs> Casey, tell us, what was your take <laughs> on episode one? High points, funny points, weird oh. points, unexpected points, you name it, tell us. Okay, well, first of all, Damon is like my big brother. So everybody knows that, you know, I'm always shouting out my big brother on my Instagram, on my social media. We go way back. Yes. I watch the character. So Damien plays the lead role of James in this character. And I love Damien. But I have to say, James. <laughs> James was James out of order. No, James <laughs> really out of order. When you really look funny, you get your new wife and you bring her coming out. Oh, so you know, so you're your old wife, share your ex-wife share. Of course, yeah, your ex-wife say, you know, she'll go move out, but still, <laughs> still. <laughs> and when just wheels are in, but he didn't know that she was there, but no man, no, James really out of order. I, I, I feel like I feel like James James is a typical man. They don't think about the, all the repercussions, you know. Yes. Him just don't I have new wife. Remember in her car. Home? In a car to make sure so she's not dead. She gone. <laughs> in just wheel her coming up near the door like and a honeymoon. Lift her up like it's brand new wife. Exactly. <laughs> like I feel them brand new also then go be like, no man, James Otter Ada. <laughs> James Otter Ada. James Otter Ada. And I was watching it and I really agree with Karen because you bring your new wife in another place and you know so your new wife hot she pretty plus stocks and you know so she all goody and everything right and then me forget up so put myself in karen's shoes i'm, I'm th this is the lens of karen yes and no me, me i bring my mother because i'm thinking up yeah. every day to see, to see your hot wife and to see your happiness and the wedding yeah. the, the marriage over but me not find my happiness it and me to wake up and to see your happiness on honeymoon no 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 no, 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 no. like marcia said stick up in right there so because me i go bring my mother in night no. Because, <laughs> so I agree. You I agree. agree. <laughs> of course, of course. And then I like the mother-in-law. <laughs> you like the mother. <laughs> of course, she shakes things up. James, she shakes. James nemesis. Denny, she shake things up. James biggest nemesis, <laughs> uh, played by Sardia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but when we, when it comes to house out of order, we don't like her. What's the mother-in-law's <laughs> name, James? Shardia? Is no, what's her so. what's her name? The character. Oh, uh, Viola. 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 Yeah, yeah. we mm. don't like Viola around. <laughs> Viola is. And you know, so they do a good job when they, when people don't like you. Yes. You know, yes. people don't like I your character. So, <laughs> Mrs. I, Bonovich. <laughs> Mrs. Bonovich, I can relate. I mean, we must we must give kudos to the actors who play alongside yes. um, Damian yeah. because. Um, we definitely have opinions. We've all formed an opinion on these characters. And see Stacey already a, a gun <laughs> for James. <laughs> Damon, Damon, if you weren't her brother. <laughs> yeah, she would destroy me, man. She ready, oh, Tada, man. Oh, Tada. Ready oh, Tada. For James. <laughs> she ready for James. And she's siding with, with Karen. And she like your mother-in-law. I mean, yeah, but, th but the this is what the happens when the house is out of order. Out of order. <laughs> no, but the thing about Viola, though, even when things were going well, you know, Viola still didn't like me. So, yeah. you know, it, it doesn't matter. Whatever I did, the banishment yeah. between the two of them though is really good yeah, yeah back yeah, and yeah. forth they call her a donkey so oh we're gonna oh, we go reach oh well we're gonna fit <laughs> and Karen's like oh we have an suv oh we're checking it up with our mama i was like no no yo, yo, yo the, the two of you the the repertoire the 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 the, the, the ribald the like it was classic um, you know, what I heard from Jamaican, um, Jamaican watchers, especially those, um, those in the diaspora, they mm. were like, I saw people used to trace for truth. <laughs> like, Yo. I saw people yeah. trace people, you know, so that, that was definitely something that, um, resonated, I think with the audiences, um, yes. is, is that that is a real scenario, mother-in-law yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and their, and their son-in-law. They don't always get along. Like it's not not everybody has an idyllic family setting, and mm -hmm. here we see it with um, James and Viola's relationship. And Karen knew. Karen knew what she was doing. Of course. Yeah, bringing, she knew. 
the mother-in-law in. And, but and I don't agree. Sorry, Denny. Sorry, I'll let you finish. No, go ahead. No, I, I was saying I don't agree when Karen and and Viola go into the room right. and move the wife's clothes. That, no, no. On yeah, that, 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 that should not That part, happen. no, no, cross the line. <laughs> no, cross the line. Disrespectful. Yes. Disrespectful. Yeah. I agree. I agree with it's James. Wife, no, that was no. disrespectful. Such, and then I'm on the wife room. And then Avana yeah. White wrote, no, 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 to cross the line. That is disrespectful. Yeah, take it what, what, I, what I like about the story, too, is the Americans in the story. So James's son is clearly an American kid who yeah. doesn't know the code. Like, if it was a Jamaican kid, it would have whole him out, you know. Yeah, but it's yeah. the American yeah. kid. The American kid said, oh, yes. <laughs> I remember her from the pizza, from the pizza. <laughs> Yeah, I remember, I remember <laughs> her from the pizza. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you you already start seeing some dynamics are about to build, right? Where mm -hmm. you know it's a Caribbean home dealing with you know regular day to day challenges and some irregular things because not everybody homes mash up like that. But mm -hmm. you'll also see the cross cultural relationships, yeah. right? Yeah. Where. Yeah. Um, you know, this American um, young man growing up in this home with these two Jamaican parents and this now new Trini wife and so on. Yeah. What what will come of that? And and how do you find it, Damien, um, in that, you know, multicultural, very diverse space um, creating together? What was that like? I mean, it, it's... It's interesting because it's it's not that is not fictional, especially for people from the diaspora, right? Because you mm -hmm. migrate, you meet someone, you get married, you have kids, and and that's where the struggle is. So what I like about that is that it provides the writers with so much more to explore. Yes, you know we can always do an episode about communication and mm -hmm. you know, and miscommunication and miscommunication because West Indian you know, people get misunderstood a lot. <laughs> Yeah, so so there there's a lot to explore between James, his son, his wife, and his mother. Because yes. you know, Jamaica Trini culture is is different, even though we're Caribbean, it's different. And then we have the American piece to it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and there you'll see in episodes to come, like there's a lot of it that that we introduce and not to give away too much, but in, in terms of even how we discipline our kids and and the difference. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and, you know, in Toronto, you hear kids all the time, oh, I'm going to call the cops or I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it when their parents discipline them and stuff. So there's so much there for the writers to really explore the characters and, yeah. and make it more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really I like, like that. Go ahead, Stacey. I like how everyone came together when they found out that um, the son was missing. Mm hmm yeah. You know, all of a sudden, it's like, let's come together. No, put put your differences aside. You know, let's call the friend. Let's call people. Let's let's try and find him. I like that part of the story. It goes to show that this house can be in order. Yeah, it yeah. actually can, but it takes it, it. It needs steps to get into order. But I mean, always start out. It's hard, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But you can. But I that part, I really love that part because all of a sudden we put all the differences aside, and you know. Yeah. So and I I've heard that. I've heard Damien say this in interviews that you know. The house may seem to be out of order, but mm -hmm. when it comes to riding together as a family, yeah. you will see that togetherness in the household. And so we yeah. definitely don't want to miss, miss that at all. And, and, yeah. and great point there, Stacey, to bring out because, you know, that is really the element. Can you stick together in the tough times mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. shed all the foolishness? Because that's really what it is, you know, it's foolishness, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? In, in, when a, somebody goes missing, all of that is shed. Can yeah, we yeah. find the person together? Yes. So that, yes. that really, you know, we like the themes that are coming out of House Out of Order. Those of you just mm -hmm. joining us, we're doing the recap of episode one of um, the new TV series, new sitcom, House Out of Order, which was filmed in Harvest Studios in California, LA, and um, was directed by, you know, big name director Bentley Evans, who has, you know, the Martin Lawrence show and the Jamie Foxx show to his credit. And, and I think, um, Damien, one of the things that um, people will appreciate is the quality, the quality of 
the 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 film now that they've seen it the quality mm -hmm. of this um the, the television series you know you can see you know they, they went all out you know multi-camera rah, 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 right yeah, and yeah, so yeah. what's it like at harvest studios damon because isn't this a black owned space yes it is i mean okay it's, yeah it's, it's a family i think um i'm pretty sure that uh, before tyler ferry you know bentley was the first uh african-american man to own his own studio yeah i, th um, I think he may be the second Second? Um, yeah, the guy from the Four Heartbeats, Robert Towson, was the first. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, yeah. so I think Bentley yeah. may be the second to have owned his own studio. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a it's a family environment. Um, it's really laid back. Um, I mean, when it comes to work, it's work, right? Um, everybody's mm -hmm. there, you know, everybody plays their role. And you're right, it's, it's, a, multi it's a multiple camera shoot, so it's, sometimes it gets technical, but you know, at the end of the day, you're a professional. You do what you're supposed to do, and you work, and the camera does it, their work. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's, mm -hmm. it's a it's an amazing environment. I I just I love it. That's great. That's great. And Stacy, my dear, you yes. have been in the big set scenarios. Um, <laughs> let's just drop a few names here, like Star Trek. Like... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So you can relate to, you know, having cameras in places that you never expect to have them after you've studied your lines oh, or you or you marked yes. your spot. What yes. what is that like really for the for the, the onlooker? Because we see it and it looks seamless, but what is that like for you? Is it in your way? Like do you get distracted sometimes? What is what is it like? No, it's not in your way, but you know, when it comes to film from theater. So when you're in theater, you know, it's one shot to get it right when we're on stage, right? In film, there's multiple takes. So on, on Star Trek, I, I stood in, um, for three seasons for Sonequa, for Sonequa. So Sonequa Martin Green. So she plays the lead and it's like, as a stand-in, you're pretty much doing everything. So you have to do all the actions. Like some directors like for you to know your lines too, but you pretty much do all the actions for, for the actress before they come in on set. So the camera follows you everywhere. So if you're running through the woods, you're running through the woods. I've And when we're talking about Star Trek, we're talking about like a huge set, right? So I've I've been in a place where I've had a camera on my back to run because they need to see certain lens and they need to see certain, um, they need to get certain angles. Yeah. But after a while, you get used to it. Yeah. You get so used to it. It's just like you just know a camera's around and, and like and, and I'm pretty sure with Damon with this set, everybody now becomes family, right? Because this is like your second home. Yeah. So everyone is like family when you go to set. It's you know. Yeah. And it's important that um, you know, for up and coming actors to note, don't look. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, don't they, yeah. in look the professional yeah in the professional <laughs> in the professional setting they say you don't want to spike the camera you don't want to look in the lens yes you, mm -hmm. know, you want to know you, you want to know what lens they're filming on you also want to know where the cameras are because especially yeah. with this even because with with tv like you know it's not like regular film where you pick up over the shoulder or over the shoulder like it's it's multiple camera because they want to capture everything so you have yeah. to know where the spaces are in between cameras if you're going to look out if you're going to yeah. see a line you know if you're going to do a throwaway line or whatever it is you need to know where the cameras are where the spaces between the cameras are so you don't and i for i guess for some people that's a little bit difficult you know yeah. but i mean for me my whole goal is i just know what i have to do i have to do the acting and i allow the cinematographers to do what they do yeah, yeah. Their job is to capture Absolutely. you and <clears throat> You know, even when we do the blocking for like, say we do a read through and we do a blocking. Once you do the blocking, you can observe where the cameras are going to be. And so now, you know, if you yeah. want to do something extra, if, 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 if it comes a time when the director say, okay, I've had enough, you guys have the license to do whatever, you know, at that point, you know, where you can play and where you cannot play. Right. Because you don't want to make, you don't want to mess up a very good take. Right. So. Yeah, yeah that's true. And that is why it's because camera important. Placement. Yeah, because yeah, camera placement is really is key, especially when you do the blocking and, and all the camera operators and, and, and the direction. Everyone has it in set that this is what the actor is going to do. This is when we're going to jump from A camera to B camera to C camera. So it's very important. So communication. So when the act, act communication is, is so, it's key. It's key on set. 
Yeah. And and I would I would suppose that after you guys have been at it for a while now, it becomes a muscle, right? Where mm -hmm. you're like, yeah. I don't need to block my own shots. I don't yeah. need to, you know, look down the camera and, and so on. So I you know, those things you can tell with experience, right? Like um the more experienced actors you can kind of pick up on it that they're more comfortable with this with these lens around them. Right. Yeah. Because you just have to think of it. It's, it's like air. It's around you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't you don't have to pick at it. Just just do your work and the camera will find you. Right. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes when you're doing a scene, too, where you where, where the space is really small and say the camera is like right up, up at your face or if you're doing it with another actor, what really helps, too, as an actor is if your scene partner really feeds you as well when you're both feeding each other right because sometimes you it, you don't matter you don't see anybody around you you see who's in front of you and that's your scene partner yeah. and that is that is that is key too when you're scene partner when you guys feed each other yeah. that is that is key and it and, makes the scene and that's why a lot of people always talk about um chemistry on set yeah. and and not just chemistry but knowing don't don't over anticipate what the next person is going to do right be in the moment so mm -hmm. that you can play off that energy you know you're not throwing away a line you you know because you're both yeah. in sync right so it's very important exactly. for you know actors watching this young actors coming up to pay attention don't overdo your scene because you want to leave room there's like a little breathing room you want to leave for that nuanced connection between you mm -hmm. and your scene partner um, you know, where, you know, where they may have, have thought when they read the line that it should be a loud laugh, but because of how you delivered it, they're like, oh, I'll just bring a subtle laugh yeah. here. And it changes the whole experience. So, you know, being able to trust Damien, right? You have to trust your partner. Yes. You have yeah. to. And, and connect, right? Yeah, so, I think. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. I think the biggest mistake you can make as an actor is kind of pre-plan how you're going to respond to yes. your scene partner. That's the worst mistake you can make. Because as you said, it, it's about feeling that energy. So if you, if you get, in, get in that psychological space where you say, okay, this is how I'm going to say it. And you're in the scene and the director say, okay, you know, give me a little bit more eyes than verbal you know than oral mm -hmm. give me give me a little more eyes when you say this you the actor you become extremely confused because mentally you already registered that this is how i'm going to do it and that makes you very difficult to direct yeah and so mm -hmm. you don't want that at the, at no point your preparation should be i mean like some people will do a character bio right and they will you know this is who i am this is my understanding of who i am and, and, and you learn your lines and you understand who you are, you understand the environment that you're going to be playing in. That's yes. where, that's to some extent, that's where the preparation ends. Yes. When you start to include how you're going to respond to the next person, that's yeah. when it becomes dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. because you, you, could preempt, you could preempt reactions and you could throw off the, the actual energy that's on the set and so on. Um, exactly. So speaking of those things, and we got a little bit technical there for folks, but, <laughs> but you know, I'm with, I'm with these great actors, I have to ask these things, um, <laughs> you know, but speaking of that now, tell us a little bit about the bio you have in your mind for James. What is that bio you've written? Who is James in House Out of Order? Well, James is a very prideful Caribbean man. You know, he's educated. He opened his own business. He loves his children. He loves his child. He loves his son. He's a family man. He believes in family. And that is why, you know, when I was looking, when I was writing the character bio, I realized, I was like, okay, there has to be some redeeming qualities. You know, yes, this family is unconventional. It's dysfunctional. But at the same time, there is an element of loyalty to each other. If you touch one, you touch everybody. It's, it's a similar mm -hmm. kind of, you know, and what I realized is that, yes, it's a fictional story, but there's some reality base in there in terms of how the relationships between every, everyone in the, in, in, in the house. So, you know, a lot of mother-in-law and daughter-in-law don't get along. A lot of mother-in-law and son-in-law don't get along. 
So even when I was writing the character bio, there are moments when I'm writing it and I'm saying, okay, you know, there's going to be a time where James and Viola, you know, see, see, see eye to eye where they agree and something, mm. Mm. you know, and they'll fall out another time. But without giving away too much, when I was writing my character bio, those are the points that I put down that James, yeah. he comes from a very disciplined home yeah he he grew up in a very difficult difficult background in terms of poverty yeah but he's in america now he starts his own business he has a house he's very prideful you know he he believes in family and and that is why when he returned home and his wife didn't really keep her word and leave he was not very happy because you know yeah we already that, agreed that you're gonna buy us out you know, that was the arrangement making, yeah, that was the arrangement. You know, no, no, I know you create a situation where my son have to see this unconventional, dysfunctional situation, and that yeah. makes him very unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, James is bio. We we hear you. <laughs> <laughs> we hear you and, and Damien, um, let, the, let the audience know sorry Denny, like people that are joining in and, and people that are aspiring actors up and coming actors let them know that the, the the actor's bio isn't written by the 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 writers or the producers it's written by the actor himself yeah. they you get your script you break it down and you make up the buyer yourself your who what where why when so uh, when you're playing this character you don't just get in and you read your lines your lines is coming from a source. There's a reason why James says this. There's a reason why James walk a certain way. There's a reason why James is right-handed. Everything, a character breakdown, the actor has to know all of this. And yes. you have to do your homework. Yeah. And, and, and good actors, if you're going to give your character nuance, if you're going to make this, the, the character come to life, because, mm -hmm. you know, the writers, they do their best. But you mm -hmm. now have to make this character real. And, you know, I was talking to Damien the other night and I'm like, you know, um, I, I, I want for you to be in the realm of the great, you know, the George Jeffersons and so on. What yeah. is that nuance that you bring? Like George Jefferson's interpretation of Bosey was his walk. Like yeah, yeah, he was yeah, like, yeah. I'm rich now. We've moved on up to the east side to a deluxe apartment. <laughs> Look how I walk, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that I know no writer told him that. You know what I mean? That yeah. was an interpretive thing. And that's what actors have to do. And as we continue to watch House Out of Order, I expect that we will see how Damien, the bio that he just explained to us, how that comes to life in this character. We can already see some nuances. So we know that we know that James is not too far from tracing you. So <laughs> especially in the in the bar, in the in the comedy club, when the bartender says something it's like, shut your mouth, I mind your business. I laugh so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but you can tell. Yeah. You can tell so much about what you say by how James dresses. Yeah. yeah. So when you talk about the character Bryder, even even when he's just going going out, he has on his dress shirt. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. button up dress shirt, you know, like so you can tell a lot yeah. of what you're saying about your character. You can tell like how he dresses too and how he moves. Yeah. yeah. But I mean as 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 the series continue, you will see the character evolve more. And just to go back to what Stacy was saying about the character bio, it's not set in stone. As as the writers write you start adding stuff and subtracting stuff. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you will show up on set with a character bio and you believe this is who this person is because this is what is going to guide you because they only give you the shell. You have to create the body around this character. And sometimes the director might say, well, that's not how I see him, you know? And so sometimes you have to go back and say, okay, if that's not how the director sees him. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to make an adjustment or I can have a healthy debate with the director and have him buy into my, you know, understanding. Your bio. Yeah. Absolutely. I so, love that healthy debate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so sometimes, you know, it's not, it's not that it's set in stone. It's not that once you go, but it's important to go with something because you, every line you say, you have to have some, there's something that happened in your life at some point, this, 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 um, this life that you have created. Yes. In your character. Mm -hmm. but, Right, you have to go back and dig. Like it's like a tool pan. Then you have to go in the tool bag and you have to 
okay, so this is why he be behaved this way. This is why he behaved this way. Let me have this. Mm -hmm. Let me take yeah. this up. You know? Yeah. And, and Damien, um, for those of you just joining us, we are doing the review of episode one of House Out of Order, which yeah. airs on Flow Jamaica, Flow Trinidad um, at, um, you know, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. ECT Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Um, and this is our lead in to episode two. So we're kind of recapping some of the, 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 you know, the interesting parts of episode one, because in episode one, we establish who is this, whose house is this? And, and why could it be a house that is out of order? And so if you're just joining us, that's what we're, we're catching up on. And um, as um, if you've been in the room, you've heard um, Damien's interpretation of James and where he, he, he pulls from to play James. But Damien, I saw some comments on social media asking if any of it is from your life, like Tete came up. <laughs> anybody who know Damien, anybody who know Damien from York, anybody who know Damien from Thailand knows about his uncle Tete and, <laughs> and the stories that attend that man. And people are like, the way how you trace Viola, James. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pull, you know, because you, you hinted at it that sometimes you pull from real life. So is this some of this, some stuff you, are these characters, some people you've met? And, you know, are you playing to that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, even, even when I did uh, Front Room or I did any of those plays that I've done, there's always someone from my past or in Jamaica or the guy who sit the coconut, the man that sells the coconut jelly on the corner. I always speak from them. So yeah, in, 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 in James, there's definitely, I mean, not X-rated Tete, but you know, <laughs> when, when Tete is calm, is definitely in him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. you will see in tonight's episode and the episode and the third episode and the fourth episode to come, you will see a lot more of him coming out. But subtle, subtle tete, not not, subtle not tete. big tete, you know. Not big tete. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, you wouldn't be able to watch it if I. I, I mean, and you know, as actors, you must be grateful for life experiences when you get these roles, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I I believe you can't pour from empty. So mm -hmm. when you guys have had all these life experiences and there are some experiences that have shaped us that have you know challenged us that have stressed us out but as an actor you get a role and you're like oh <laughs> let me yes, yes let me yes, put yes. in <laughs> let me put yes. in this person here you know oh so so this is how we we are going i i know somebody who fight like this you know <laughs> so yes it's so true. It's so true. Because yeah, Viola, um, Viola, who, who is Damien, Damien's um, character, James, has a mother-in-law that moved in abruptly. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, Sardia, to her credit, definitely um, weaves very easily um, between, you know, pretending to be a respectful mother um, and then, you know, has her little digs that she yes. throws that she, she throws yeah. at James. And James, in response, has his little digs that he throws back. Mm -hmm. And I, I can relate to them. I, I know these yeah. people. I've seen them somewhere. Yeah. I've yeah. walked around and met these people somewhere. Yeah. And I think that is the, the credit to writers and actors that um, House Out of Order is relatable. And, um, you know, you, you, and, you know, as much as we talk about its Caribbean flavor, what I wanted to point out for folks tonight is that it is the themes are universal. Yes. The themes, yes. The themes are universal. How do you, you know, maneuver a, a family that's broken and trying not to like break apart? How do you maneuver challenges? Do you come together as one or do you break, you know, continue to be um, separated in your response, you know, how do you navigate regular day-to-day -day friendships and so on? All of those things are going to be in house out of order. And I want people to know that 
don't worry you'll be able to understand don't worry you'll be able to 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 follow along <laughs> you know because <laughs> it's it's a mixed cast it's not just jamaicans or trinidadians there are other you know there are american actors in there mm -hmm. as well yeah. and um hint hint there'll be some surprise um guest actors oh yes Oh. Yes, Stacy, some names are come. Yes. <laughs> but we, but we said nothing because we don't nothing. want them to say nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but for those of you just joining us, Damien, tell us about the cast. Name them, what, you know, what interaction you have with them in terms of relationship in the, in the show. So tell us so, a little bit about who's in it. So we have Sardia Robinson, who plays my mother-in-law. We have Alicia Irons, who plays my ex-wife. We have DJ Anna out of Trinidad, that plays my wife. We have uh, my son, Tyler Beatty, um, wonderful kid. <laughs> and then we have uh, DJ Simo, who plays a police officer who is good friends with... Uh, my my wife Lisa, and uh, we also have Rodé, who is a comedian out of Trinidad. Um, he plays my best friend. I always uh, say he he remind me of Kramer. He's always popping in at <laughs> the most inconvenient times. You know? <laughs> he he likes yeah. he lives there. You know he just yeah. wants the door open. Yeah, just walking so, like him on the giant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that's the core. That's the core cast, and then we have guests. A reoccurring actors and guest actors on the show as well. Yeah, we have some um, reoccurring actors. We have a singer who yes. who ran the nightclub that we saw in in the first episode. Mm -hmm. So the, the the nightclub that became a comedy night that mm -hmm. your son performed at. The yes. singer um, there is um, Jovan Jovan Marie. Yes, um, and she's a singer in real life. So. Yeah, she's <laughs> Yeah, so she's doing a great job. And then, um, you know, we had characters that were working with Damien in his office. Yes, yes. They're Americans. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and, and you'll see more and more as, as the show develops. So um, our take on, well, we got Stacey's take on episode one. <laughs> I didn't give my take on episode one publicly. Um, but I'll give you a snippet. So my take on episode one is um, it is clear that they use episode one to establish who whose family this is, um, mm -hmm. who are some of the main characters that will interact with James. Um, it is clear that they want us to take sides in, yes. in this house out of order. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so it will depend on who you who appeals to you as a as a viewer. Like because I'm used to playing villains <laughs> when I, when I act, I like the people who are bad, right? So I like the troublemaker. Name. So I like Viola character to to James start shaking head already. <laughs> I like Viola character because she's a she of the zingers and she's a strong um force against James. So I already start liking her. Um, I am intrigued by James because, as Stacy said earlier, James just bringing this woman and he not check, he not check, he not cross the T's and he not dot the I's. And you know, James, James to me is such a typical um, guy going about his life, just like hey, I, I have my marriage, like duh. <laughs> Dawn mm -hmm. going to move her in. Dawn going to put her in the master bedroom. <laughs> I he know. Just, he just have got through life. Um, I think there was some um, some very strong acting from you know Damien and a, and um, a few more members of the cast. I won't mention the coming on about to get offended. Um, <laughs> so, but there you know there's there, there's strength. You know every ensemble cast is like that, right? Like there's some people who stand out um, from jump. And then others who will build as the screen, the screenwriters allow for it, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I think I like that we're already from the jump being asked to take a position. On yes. Who makes yes. this house out of order and who is responsible? Do we blame James or do we blame the wife who is hard of hearing and no one leave? <laughs> Yes, you know, you know what? You know what I noticed <laughs> to me. I, 
<laughs> they better blame the wife. <laughs> blame the ex-wife. <laughs> I notice with James, like you know, when he communicates with his ex-wife versus when he communicates with his his new wife, yes. there's a difference in oh, communication. Yes. There's a difference in his body language. Oh, yes. There's a difference in what he says. Oh, yes. You know, when he communicates with his new wife, he's just hype and you everything. With his, with his ex- I know he's just so short. There's a there's a very small scene that I really loved, and I feel like they should have played some. And you should have played some song to this one where James got on his phone and he changed the piece of girl's number to wife and he started out wife and you were like, wife, you, you are your wife, wife. <laughs> my first wife. I was just like, you should have played that little song, but you know, probably can't do it, but yes. I love that little part right there because yeah. he's dancing and she's, and she's, she's jovial. She's, she's very happy. I like that. Yeah, she yeah. brings out the side of James. This, this, yeah. this, this, this. this, 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 this is like James' side back in HP. Yes. Like in Chick himself, you know, yes. just brings out the side of him. Yeah. Yes. yes. And then the wife, the wife, he, 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 um, he gets tight. Yes. <laughs> he gets tense yes. and Very tight, light, you know, because there's history there, and he, <laughs> he just wants her yeah. gone. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't come and tell the man, boy, you liar, you liar. So you need to get five percent, your fifty percent. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so definitely we see that um house out of order we see why it's out of order and we are asked to take a side and um mm-hmm. that i say credit to writers credit to actors um the other piece for me damien was i felt like it was so short which is which is a compliment um mm-hmm. you know when when a series wraps up and you're like it done what 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 the rest yeah. Then you know. Yeah. Then you know that you're connecting. Then you know if you leave the audience wanting for more. Then you know that you're connecting. Sure. So I look forward to seeing what will come. Episode two tonight. Those of you oh, just yeah. joining us. Episode two of House Out of Order, which is a new TV series starring our friend here, Damien. Yes, big up um, yourself, <laughs> Ray. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, you know, House Out of Order, you can watch it if you are in North America. You can watch it on nbtme.com. nbtme.com. And if you're in the Caribbean, you can watch it on Flow. NBT is carried by Flow. Um, and the show is going to be on Flow. So the times now, because we don't want a confusion. 5 mm-hmm. p.m. Pacific time. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Toronto and Jamaica is on the same time. And then, um, you know, the Eastern Caribbean and Central, it's going to be at 7 p.m. So you have no almighty excuse to watch this, this show because they've made it accessible. Um, and Damien, talking about access, tell us a little bit about NBT. Yes, so NBT is a streaming service uh, that's run by uh, Bentley Evans, who owned the studio as well. And he wants to create a space where uh, Black creatives can share their their art on uh, and make it accessible to everybody. And so that's the idea with, uh, it's called National Black Television. Mm-hmm. So they're creating their own streaming service so people can watch it. And so far, everybody has been enjoying watching it on NBT. Um, we have people in England who actually watch it on NBT who woke up. Um, I have one friend that's in uh, Turkey that actually woke up and watched it. Um, I think it was 5, uh, 3.30 in the morning. And I think in England it's wow. 5 a.m. So yeah, um, big shout out to, to NBT and, and Bentley Evans for creating for creating that. And we want to appeal to folks. Um, we said this last week when we went live, and I'll say it again and again. Shows get their success from support from viewers. If you don't show, um, if networks can't see that you had numbers behind this project, mm-hmm. if those who are watching numbers can't see that there were numbers behind the project, the impression is that it's not wanted. 
Mm-hmm. We know better. We know yeah. that mm-hmm. you know when we walk around with our friends, when we're talking somewhere, we go for dinners or whatever. People always say, "Boy, we don't have enough representation." Boy, I wish I could see myself more on screen, in TV, or in film, or on theater um, stages. This is how we keep these things going. You have to support. So when we come live, yes, we want to recap on the pasta and all of that, but we also want you to know about it because I'm, I bet you, Damien, you had people saying, oh, when it come on again. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you know? Yes, so, yes. So we're doing the work. We're reminding you that in another, you know, few minutes from now, it goes live again on NBT and it goes on flow in, in the Caribbean. And the reason we're reminding you is because we want them to see that you guys who tell us all the time that you want this content, you believe in it, you accept it, you like it, you're supporting it. So when they can go over now and have big conversations about this being picked up, because me wants to just pick up on Netflix, but wants to just find a big, big... Exactly. Um, <laughs> wants to just find a big, big network. Then, well, we're, not, we're not good for NBC too. Uh, well, so how do we get there? We get there from you showing the numbers, showing up, showing out. And yeah. when we call you to action and we call you to support, we expect that you will show up just like you always show up for us in the past. Um, yeah. you know, so that's why we're doing this live as well. To um, you know, keep you in the know, keep you aware, and we like the idea of recapping. You know. Of so, course, so yeah, I think yeah. we're gonna recap the episodes each week if we can. Damien goes back to set um tomorrow, so we're not sure yet about timing, but he'll keep me in the loop. And if we can, we'll go live and talk about episode two next week as well. Yeah. Um, as as we wind down. Um, I don't want to miss this opportunity to talk about um, you guys' life outside of House Out of Order. You know, you're <laughs> doing other things. And we have Stacy and Buchanan here. Stacy, you have, you know, you have done so much. You've done production of, you know, you know, big fashion show, Ray, Ray, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't know, if, I don't know if you can't tell, folks, but Stacy is a model too. Um, so you know, and and you've also become a huge mental health advocate. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, a lot of people don't know that behind the lens, behind mm-hmm. the smiles, behind all the positioning that we do, there are there are, there are, you know different triggers, different pains that we go mm-hmm. through as individuals, and we're keeping it secret. And Stacy's role in life. No, she have a new acting position, and that acting position is to end the stigma around mental health issues. So tell us a little bit more about what you've been doing, Stacy, coming from behind, you know, the scenes of of all these productions, and now you're in front in a different way. Yeah, thank you, Jenny. Thank you for that big up. You know, I'll take my flowers. Um, <laughs> my journey started off uh, acting, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm theater trained. I'm film, I'm film trained. Um, basically, as a mental health advocate, I, I struggled with um, anxiety, suicidal ideation, and depression. And I realized that I cannot be the only black person that's going through this. And so I decided to make a film, a documentary that talks about how mental health and the stigmas are affecting us in the black community. And I did that in 2015. You know, this is somebody that, you know, I used to think like, okay, you know, I'm going to have the same career success as Halle Berry because we have the same birthday. So yes, same success. But God took a different way and turned my life in a different way. And so when that film came out in 2015, first of all, it made Canadian history because it's the first film in Canada, documentary in Canada done on mental health in the black community. It propelled me to a um, mental health advocate. I've done a TED talk. I have a podcast now from the same from the same show. And 
basically my role is to continue raising awareness and removing the veil of shame because the number one thing with mental health in the black community is shame. We feel like we're the only one that's going through it. And I want you anybody that's watching this right now, we we tend to think that mental health or people that struggles with mental health look haggard or them homeless or they had mash up or something like that. No, they look just like me. And I just want you all to know that you are never alone. So it's really important for us to talk about our mental health and to have positive conversations about it. You know, because when you talk about mental health, all of a sudden you're mad. You're crazy. We use words like that. And so if a person is struggling, they don't want to come for it and they don't want to talk about it. But that's where my work is. I do um, keynote presentation. Um, I speak on it. I do workshops on it. That is that is my role that I greatly love so much in life. And, and that is continue to raise awareness and let you know that you're not alone. Yes. And oh, so tell folks the name of the podcast so that they can look it up. Yeah. So the documentary is called The Blind Stigma and the podcast is The Blind Stigma Podcast. So you can find um, you can find uh, the show, the documentary, you can find it on YouTube and you can go to the website www.theblindstigma.com and it's also on Instagram. So The Blind Stigma, T-H-E-B-L-I-N-D-S-T-I-G-M-A. So yeah, and I'm also here too. So, and I, and I always say this, and I know this may not be the platform for this, but if you or if you know somebody, as is the next necessarily like a physical space, it could be somebody that you don't have to talk to. My DMs are always open because trust me, I've I've been there. So I want you to know my DM is open and my DM is a safe space. There you go. Um, you know, we, we're serving up all kinds of things on this chat, guys. It's a live <laughs> chat, a live chat with friends. Um, Damien, Damien Gart Brown, Stacey Amber Cannon, and myself, Danae Parrott. I go by Media Bistio. Damien goes by Damien G. Brown. He's on Twitter. He's on Instagram. And we have a page up on Facebook. Go follow. Um, and Stacey Ann Buchanan, as the name is is her name on Instagram and on um, platforms all around. You can find her and follow. Follow follow Damien, follow Stacy. You don't have to follow me because I'm not selling no wares today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, follow Danae. And Danae, but, can I jump in and say one thing? You encourage a community to go out and support the show and watch the show. But I'm also encouraging you to tell a friend, to tell another friend, to tell another friend. Yes. You repost it. You put it in your story. You know, Carson, I'm not for putting on a story. I'm big up Damien and big up the show because that's how we are great in numbers. So Damien's win is all our wins. Yes. It's yes. not just Damien winning. We are all winning because this is opening doors for somebody behind him to come. So I want you to know that. Yeah. And, and particularly this production, being so Caribbean flavored you're very yes. rarely going to see a sitcom with so many stars that are you know from the Caribbean yeah. so so make sure that you support that because you know we have another thing we complain about you know Stacey when we watch the Hollywood films and so on and we hear the Jamaican fake accent them I was just about to yeah. say that yeah. yes but this of the real thing. You the know, yeah, yeah. I, if you if you want upset me, <laughs> if you want upset me, yeah, man, how you doing, man? I want just mash up the TV screen. So when when we can see ourselves, and as Damien would put it, speak in his own tongue, um, mm -hmm. you know, deliver these lines as as needed because not all of it is going to be in patwa, obviously, but mm -hmm. being able to do that you know is is a plus and it it, it moves the representation bar a little bit love interrupt with it moves the representation bar a little bit closer mm -hmm. to, to where we would like it because it's not it's nowhere near we would like it each of these yeah, instances yeah. that we can show our support and so on. So House Out of Order is one instance. Um, NBT has a slew of shows that are yeah. coming out of Harvest Studios and other places that you can follow because Bentley has other work going. Um, Bentley Evans, the director of House Out of Order, has a production with um, MC Light that's yeah. out now that's also being brought. Um, Arnold's Caribbean Pizza, which has a very interesting connection to how Damien got this role um, yes. also on there. And um, I saw Bigger Boss out of Jamaica with um, my friend IT, IT and Fancy Cat. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, 
our there's work being done let's support it let's support and and be real about that support um we'll do our part every week we're going to remind you um because mm -hmm. for some reason you know when it comes to our things we don't have no memory <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. michael jordan said my release was shoes next week and everybody put it in the calendar um but we say house out of order every sunday and everybody say i went again it's, yeah. it's Sunday or Saturday. <laughs> you know I mean? Every Sunday, you can't miss it's, it. It's Sunday, guys. Yeah. It's Sunday, Sunday, and it's in like another 34 minutes. In another 34 minutes, it goes um, on NBT and Flow um, and so on. Damien, this week you've been doing the press runs. <laughs> um, and right. listen... Um, if you go on Damien's page, you'll see that he got an interview on Smile Jamaica and yes. you know, was featured in the Observer. And we're waiting on some other things to come through. But Damien, um, and Stacey, let me tell you something. Damien's narrative on its own is such a oh, strong, powerful, inspirational one. I was on the phone with him. Um, I did a connection. So I'm on the phone, on mute. And Damon is telling his story. And we know the story of Stacey. We know the story. Abalisi. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. When I watched the interview on Smile Jamaica, and I know it was only 10 minutes, but you told it so well. Kudos to you and, and the host. You told it so well. I'm like, Damon, I'm a big brother, but we never know the part here. Oh, yes. It's just like every time you say your story, you tell your story. You, you tell it in such a way where it's like, I'm just hearing it. Yeah, yeah. And the connection where you let people know where you're com coming from because a lot of people, like I say, they always see the shine. Mm -hmm. But yeah. they never see the grind. They never see the sweat. They never see the blood, the tears behind, you know? Yeah. So here, it took a long journey to get here. Yes. And and Damien will argue that this is just the, the, the beginning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. This yeah. is just the beginning. We, we, we're not even reached the mountain top yet because you know tell tell us a little bit about the big plans Damon because you you must have a few other goals um screen wise um that um, you want to see <laughs> um there is there is one project uh coming at the end of this year so we just had a verbal you know agreement on that and yes. And then we, the writing part is coming along well too. There's two yes, scripts sir. that my writing partner and I just finished and we have representation now. So, I mean, even doing um, House Out of Order has opened a lot of doors, like more people are calling now and, yeah, you know, there, there's definitely more opportunity, which I, I don't want to talk about too much until no, no, no. It, no. It, it, it come out. No. So, but yeah, it's, it's amazing how, you know, it's it's been a journey you know i mean mm -hmm. from theater to tv to film to tv again but it, it feels different this time it feels like you know maybe if i'd gotten this opportunity 10 years ago it would be different so there there are certain things that you need to go through in this yes. in this life you know 100 yeah. um, yeah. to, to make you appreciate moments like this so yeah i am this year is definitely going to be a big year i am i'm i'm putting it out there it's, yeah it's and and we're we're feeling it and believing it for you as well David. Yeah, yeah. we're 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 um uh, it's interesting that you said this one feels different because it does it really does yeah. feel like we've turned a corner and and we know them in a long time we know them when they talk about my god do last school and all these things we've turned a corner yeah um yeah. in the career and in your ideation like of what you are as an actor and what mm -hmm. your potential is as an actor um so definitely um we're we're believing that this is going to be a, a strong year for damien yeah. brown and those of you just joining those of you who are joining from my account or stacy's account damien brown above us here is um the lead in house out of order goes yep. live in 30 minutes on flow jamaica flow trinidad flow whatever flow one in the Caribbean and nbtme.com nbtme.com you can literally watch it on your iPad okay. on anything like it is so accessible there is no excuse yes, let's run up the numbers on episode 2 this yes. week 
run up those numbers that people know that um, yeah. we appreciate love this um, this effort coming out of Harvest Studios and out of the creators' hands, um, Baron J. Um, Littleton, Littleton and uh, Christopher Moore and Christopher Moore. Yes. They're the creators. And of course, there's multiple writers um, yeah. that, you know, we've tried to make sure we give credit to in all the press that we've been doing. So yeah. go and read the article them and, and, and catch up. And episode one is on YouTube. So you yes. can, you yeah. can catch up before um, the, the episode episode two airs um and of course next week we'll try to be here again not just to remind you but to do a recap um and damien give us a teaser what happens tonight because you keep telling me yeah. that if, if we think we like episode one wait till we see episode two give i'm not i'm not saying listen <laughs> i want people to be shocked yeah okay word tune in tune in Tune in. That's all. You're <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, all right. Week, so next week, next week, I'm not. I might be able to join you because I, I'm, I'm jumping on a plane tomorrow. Where I'm heading back to LA tomorrow, so we start filming again. So, um, I will definitely try to to jump on here next week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but so if not, I leave it to you guys. If, if 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 you would help me out with that one <laughs> of course of course well we we'll, we'll definitely want to do a recap um because since you're not giving us any teaser you're not letting out any steam nothing nothing <laughs> not come out of the park um you know no. poor us poor us no, no, we, no, type part. <laughs> no we have to know no we have to watch it yeah. because yes. we want to see we want to see if james up to any more antics Oh, yes. We want to see what will happen with James and Viola's relationship now that they have to share a roof. With... <laughs> <laughs> we you have know, to see... You know, what's, you know what's interesting with... But we didn't talk. And I mean, I don't know if we are because we have a theater background or what, but we didn't talk at all throughout the table read, throughout... You know, because we do it in a studio, so our dressing room, you know, it's like it's like an apartment. Yeah. Um, but we never ever spoke. We never said anything to each other. Like it wasn't. It was. It was. So you guys were in character from John. Character. Yeah, I mean, once we did the table read, you know, it was clear that these are two <laughs> people who are not gonna like each other. Um, <laughs> and I just think it, it works that way because you know we. We, we we arrive in the scene with a certain mindset. Yeah. And you <laughs> see it, you see it comes out. You know, yeah. I don't think we talked when we're on the mobile. <laughs> I think it's Yeah. Yeah, I think it's um I think it's actually after we filmed the third episode that we had a real conversation. I, I, I'm pretty sure of it. Like we really, the first two episodes, I guess we really, without any clear intentions, we really wanted to make sure that we, we had a clear understanding of who we were and, you yeah. know, before we start getting chubby like with that. each other. Yeah. 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 It works and it played on screen and we enjoyed, we enjoyed the, the, the back and forth between the two of you. There's some good moments there. Um, yeah. So we're going to wrap up, folks. Um, we try not to go too long each week. Um, look out. House Out of Order. Episode yeah. 2. Yes. Mm -hmm. Episode 2 tonight. Goes live. Flow. Flow Jamaica. Flow Trinidad. Flow 1. Flow 1. Um, yeah. it, it is channel number 214. Mm -hmm. Um, for those who want to, you know, say them no no we float up on them cable down there. Um, uh, you see, I like to remove excuses, you know. So yes, channel yes, two please. one <laughs> channel two one four on flow. Um, you know, flow one. And of course, if you are in North America, diaspora people come through, Americans yes. come through, Canadians come through. It's on NBTME. N B T M E dot com. It's literally gonna be on the page live. So as soon as you're logging, it's there. 
and we go live um, in 24 minutes. So yeah. you want to go check that out. Um, and as we lock, we, we log off now, you can go and watch the episode one, search for house out of order episode one on YouTube. So you can Thank catch you. up if you never did watch it last week. We're giving you yes. time to watch one <laughs> and we're giving you time to watch two, <laughs> one. right? And then we right. know we're going to go get our, our popcorn and stuff together. Yes. And I forgot put in a load of laundry and such. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we can get ready to see what, what is in store in House Out of Order. Coming to you from Harvest Studios in LA, directed yep. by the great Bentley Evans, and starring our friend Damian Brown, and a host of other great, talented folks, from <laughs> Sardia, yeah, yeah. Alicia, you know, um, Rodé, DJ Anna, um, Ultra Simo, all of yep. you great job last week we're looking forward to seeing what you got in store for us this week thanks yeah. everybody for joining us stacy thanks for joining in thank you um, thank you sis thank you like me like stacy because stacy take notes so we can do a wrap-up <laughs> and a review mm -hmm. <laughs> right yeah yeah so we'll do that and of course go follow damien if you don't know him you'll get to know him um go follow damien damien g brown on Instagram and Twitter, and he has a page on Facebook. All right, guys. Have a good one. Okay. See you next week. Bye. Bye.